Well, we are a little bit more than a month into the official hurricane season for 2025, and so far it's been relatively slow with just two named storms. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb from 11 Alive in Atlanta. Joining me right now, Bobby Deskins, the Chief Meteorologist in Tampa at WTSP, our sister station down there. Bobby, how do you think it's been so far? Well, well fairly quiet. It hasn't been near us or really near too many people, so that's been a good thing. But it looked like it was going to be really quiet to get started. Not the forecast. The forecast was above average, but we were not seeing a whole lot develop. And then, Chris, you know, we had the two storms, and I think each of them only lasted about a day or so before they fell apart and moved over land. So, so far, so good. But, uh, we, we got a long season ahead of us here. Yeah, and let's talk about those storms because you mentioned that. Andrea was the first one, and that was in the north central Atlantic. And I really don't think it lasted but like 12 hours. Um, it was named yeah. a tropical system, and then it fell apart. Didn't affect anybody, but of course, uh, w of course, we call those fish storms. It impacted the fish there in those yep. areas. Now, Barry was a little bit different because it did form um, there in the Gulf, closer to the Bay of Campeche there. And it did uh, cause some impacts as it moved into Mexico, but it was also a pretty short-lived storm and as officially a, a tropical storm. So that's what we were dealing with with Barry. We're, uh, you know, we're, I'm sure you were watching that very closely. Does that give you any signals in what you watch in the Gulf of these storms developing, how things are there so far? Well, we're looking, you know, one of the things we look at the water temperature, how it's, it's warmer, so it's easier to make some storms. But, you know, there's been a ton of Saharan dust around the area lately. And so it's been interesting to see how storms can form in those Saharan dust clouds because that generally tends to dry the atmosphere out a little bit. Uh, and this is not Andrea. Andrea was way east of Bermuda. We didn't have dust out there, but Barry did. And it had at least a little bit and it was still able to get going a little bit. So that was kind of interesting. And the other thing is too, is where Barry did. Barry formed, well, it was actually on, in the Caribbean, on the western side of the Caribbean, right up against Honduras crossed over the Yucatan, came out into the southern Bay of Campeche, and then gradually developed and moved into Mexico. So it was moving that low track from east to, well, east to west, northwest, right? That's an interesting track for me because as the season gets going, we're really going to want to know what that high pressure out near Bermuda is doing where it is, how it's shaped, how far north, how far south and west and east, right? Because that will eventually start to determine where these storms go once we get into the heart of the season. To see Barry stay low and go further to the west, that's kind of good news, at least especially for us here in the Tampa area, because we get hit when storms come and they go to the north and then turn and come back out to the north and the east. So it's still so early in the season to be looking at that, but that's just one thing I'm keeping an eye on. Well, and, and once you mention that, this is really interesting to look at right here. This is your typical June hurricane development map that we're watching, and Barry was pretty much on that track there, uh, as you were mentioning uh, there, uh, near Central America, crossing over the Yucatan and into, that was really into Mexico rather than up into Texas. But, you know, these are just the general areas of development. And now we're watching a system that is in the Gulf that could move across the peninsula of Florida. And so I know we're getting into July right now, but these tracks that we're talking about right now are pretty much in line with what we would typically see there in June and at the end of June. And with stalled frontal boundaries where they can form over the Gulf or over the Atlantic. And that's almost exactly what we're seeing now. We're getting a frontal boundary coming down to the northern Gulf to the just off the southeastern coast over the Atlantic. And we always watch the tail ends of those fronts. So you would you'd be looking in the Gulf, of course, but you'd also be looking out east of Florida and southeast, say, South Carolina area, east of Georgia. Right. And that's where we may end up getting a little bit development this particular weekend coming up here. It looks like kind of minor at this time, but you're right. Most of what we've seen so far is pretty typical for this time of the year. And, you know, it's a good thing because when they form in close like that, if you looked at that formation map that you just showed, most of that is very close to land. And when that happens, they have less time to get strong. So as we move into the deeper part of the season, they start forming further and further out. They're out over open, warm air and they can get open, warm water and they can just get stronger and stronger. So, uh, you know, the typical early season storms tend to be a little bit weaker, if you will, than the later season storms. But we just don't want any of them at all. And, and we're looking at now the July typical tropical development. And that's where we do see maybe a little bit more 
of the development that could be a little bit more over to the east there and through parts of the eastern Caribbean and might be over water a little bit more. Some of those typical tracks in July would take those through the Caribbean and then up into the Gulf or maybe on the other side of the islands there from the Caribbean moving up toward the Atlantic, maybe impacting the Atlantic coastline. Now again, these are generalizations for what we have typically seen in the month of July. So uh, that's where, is that typically where you start to look as we get into July for that development too? Yeah, exactly, because you're getting less and less dust as you work your way into July. The atmosphere gets a little bit more prime. You have less wind shear generally that ebbs and flows. But right now we've got a quite a bit of wind shear across the southeast coast right now. But if you get further down into the Caribbean, you get less and less wind shear as you get deeper into July. And that makes it easier for storms to form. Those white lines that you see there, the arrows, those basically, if you think about it, they're the west side of that Bermuda high pressure. Mm -hmm. If that Bermuda high pressure is further to the east, you're going to get one that's going to curve that, that line from San Juan up towards the Carolina Outer Banks. Right? If that high pressure is further to the west, pushing closer to the United States, it could push the storms further to the west into the Gulf, and, and in Barry's case, maybe even further into the west towards Mexico. We've had a really good large area of high pressure over us for about the last two and a half weeks or so, and that was during the time of Barry. That high pressure will shift in ebbs and flows west and east all the way through the summertime. So that'll be interesting to see. At the beginning of the season, we do look at some models that tend to tell us where they think the average location of that high will be. And some of the stuff I saw at the beginning of the season tends to say that that would be maybe a little bit further east than normal. And if that's the case, then you get into later July and into August and September, and you start looking for more storms to recurve and potentially stay out to sea. Hmm. Now, again, that's just an average placement from a forecast model. It all depends on exactly where that high is and where it's going when you have a storm on the map. But to me, that's one good sign. But, you know, we do have a forecast for an above average season. So you just got to watch every single one of these things. You know, and Bobby, it's funny for folks who are listening right now who think that this uh, hurricane and tropical prediction is so easy. And they're hearing us talking about, but wait a minute, we got some dust. And wait a minute, we've got a hur you know, uh, uh, an area of high pressure, the Bermuda High, that's going to drive all this. There are so many things that we have to watch when we are tracking and forecasting these storms. And you mentioned one of those. And that kind of gets us to what we're talking about uh, for tonight, about what's going on in the Gulf right now. And you had mentioned earlier about we've got a front that just moved through our area, pushing down toward the south. And a lot of times as those fronts stall out, pushing to the south, it's really hard here in the summertime for these fronts to really move too far down to the south. But yep. that's where we can get that area of low pressure developing along that front and over the Gulf. We could see something developing, moving over the Florida Peninsula and maybe out uh, into the Atlantic. And I know you're watching this very closely, too. Yeah, you know, that map, that orange area, that's from the Hurricane Center. That's, they update that a couple times a day. And those are the areas that they're watching for possible development. That orange area looks very similar to what you showed on that June formation map. Yeah, it, it, really it starts in the eastern Gulf and crosses Florida and goes up the southeast coast. So uh, very, very similar look. It's not that far to be uh, out of the unexpected, right? You fortunately in Atlanta can get some cool fronts this time of the year. Not very many. We don't get any. Uh, they, they, they stall before they get here. And that's exactly what this one's doing. It's stalling up to over North Florida and just off the southeast coast. And so that's why we'll be watching that area. But again, not out of the ordinary. I, I think in this particular situation, it does look like there's quite a bit of wind shear that's going to be around over that area. And that's good news, because if that holds, that means it's going to make it tougher for anything that does try and form to get pretty strong there. So we're hoping that it just becomes a little bit more of a rainmaker or maybe even stays out to sea. And Bobby, how are you communicating to your folks there and even the folks maybe from other areas who are planning to travel to Florida? A lot of times people get caught up in whether it is or isn't going to develop. And it, even if it doesn't develop into an official tropical system, it could still be a good rainmaker, as you mentioned. Oh, it doesn't need a track. You're absolutely right. Even when it does get a track in a cone, that doesn't mean the weather is just in that cone, right? That's just where the center may go. What we tell people here is, you know, number one, if I'm not worried about it, we, I'll tell you when you can be worried about it. That, that's, that's the bottom line because we don't want people to get upset. And after last year, I mean, we got hit with three hurricanes, Chris, and people here 
are tired of it, to be honest with you. And it's, it's even hard to go on TV and talk about hurricane season forecasts for the upcoming season because people don't even want to hear it. Really, you learn over time is know what you know and then explain what you don't know. We know we're going to see some scattered showers and storms. We know that today and tomorrow and even into Friday, some of that's going to be a little bit heavier than normal. But by the weekend, it's going to be a little bit less than that. And we also know that watching the tropics now, there's the unknown for we know the unknown. I know it sounds crazy, but we know that there's a small chance of development out there. But what we have seen over the last couple of days is that the models are starting to agree a little bit more with each other. And so our confidence in looking east of Florida and pretty much staying east of Florida is growing higher and higher. So we always tell people, you know, look, check back frequently because a forecast you hear now may change 24 hours from now. And a lot of times in hurricane country, what will happen, especially people that just moved here, like, well, I watched the news on Monday right. and they didn't say this is not going to be a big deal. And then Thursday, there's a category two right off the coast, right? Things can change quickly. I don't see that happening at this one, but it is certainly something that we're going to want to keep our eye on through the upcoming weekend. And of course, our nightmare is when those people say, hey, but I watched last week the guy that was, or I heard last week on social media, the guy sitting in his basement oh. who had access to this magical <laughs> model here that said this was going to be a hurricane on us by tomorrow. You know, we've got, got that to deal with, too. Uh, so hey, it got a lot of clicks, <laughs> got a lot of clicks for that one, though. Clicks, likes and shares is what they're looking for. So, Bobby, what you mentioned there about that more eastward development, maybe off the east side of the uh, Florida coast, then that impacts potentially the Georgia coast and South Carolina coast. And so then mm -hmm. when we get there, we have to watch, you know, number one, if it does develop into a low or if it becomes a tropical depression or, you know, if it does have the ability to become a tropical storm, just how strong that is again the rainmaking potential there of it. Then we have to watch the actual location of that low, if it's gonna be close enough to spread rain or wind to the coast, or what a lot of people need to be aware of though, even if it stays off the coast and doesn't make a direct impact, you've got to watch for the rough surf and those uh, rip currents that could be happening. Just people here innocently along the Georgia or South Carolina coast, maybe you know St. Simon, Savannah, or Hilton Head, uh, just there just to go to the beach and okay, the hurricane or yep. the tropical system's not gonna hit, but it could still be dangerous there in those waters. I mean, we could have 25 to 30 knot winds paralleling the coast like a longshore current off of Myrtle Beach, but that's gonna blow waves to coastal Georgia, right? And that could cause rip current risk. In fact, I would say at least on Saturday and probably lingering into Sunday, we may have a, a rip current risk for the uh, Georgia beaches and even into Northeast Florida. But it's one of those things, again, you gotta watch because if I made a forecast right now for what I would expect, I'd say, yeah, there's gonna be some small waves coming in, some higher than normal tides and a, and a chance for rip currents, but that may change. Right, and, and, and I can show you what the model is now. We get model runs every six hours, yeah, <laughs> and they're yeah. going to change. And then the weather that's happening out there right now, and that's the most important part. That data goes into all of those weather models, and then they run, and it takes hours for that to happen. So what, that's constantly a process that's happened all the time, and I know a lot of people want to look at the models. They love the spaghetti plots, right? Yeah. And they want to pick that one line that's coming right to them, uh, we're not in even anywhere close to getting spaghetti plots because we don't have one low pressure center. We don't have anything like that yet. Yeah. This looks like it's going to be a, a, probably a sheared, weak, low, broad, low pressure system out there. But we just have to wait and see. What people should know is to keep an eye on these forecasts daily going through the weekend because that's the other thing, Chris. It's, it's Fourth of July weekend. Yeah. You know, people are out and about. They're having fun. Yeah, and the other thing that we want people to know is this is really just the beginning of the season. We mentioned we're a month, a little bit more than a month into it, but you can see from this graphic here that this is really just the beginning of where things start to get a little bit more active here in the month of July. And then really the more activity comes in once we get into August, mid-August really to mid-October. We peak there on September 10th is the statistical peak of hurricane season. And then it starts coming down a little bit, but you know, it's gonna be the time frame really mid-July to really August where things ramp up. And then mid-August to mid-September is really that peak time where things get more active and then hopefully starting to slow down a little bit more before the season ends there on November 30th. Are you guys ready down in Florida? I know you've gotta be. Uh. 
Oh, as much as we can be. Absolutely. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have a lot of people that are still rebuilding. Yeah. Uh, from we had three hurricanes. We had Debbie that gave us flooding rainfall for inland locations. We have Helene, which didn't even make landfall on our coast. It was well north of us, but it went about 100 miles offshore and gave us the highest storm surge we've seen in the Tampa Bay region in over 100 years. In about 103 years, we had five to eight foot storm surge, and that one really did the damage. And then on top of that, two weeks later, we had Hurricane Milton make landfall just to our south, right here in the Tampa Bay region. And that put down 15 to 20, well, maybe 10 to 16 inches of rainfall, but that had a lot of wind that caused some damage as well. So we got all three, we got surge, we got inland flooding, and we got wind damage, but it took three different hurricanes for that to happen. So we're prepared as much as we can be, but unfortunately the silver lining of all of that is that our residents here now, and a lot of them were new because they'd moved down over the last three, four or five years, but now they know exactly what can happen in a strong hurricane. And so the silver lining part of that is, unfortunately, we learned the hard way, and this year I think we'll be a little bit better prepared. And I know that you guys have more of the impacts there, but here we are in Atlanta and North Georgia, away from the coast, but we definitely have the impacts here. We definitely felt Helene here. Whew. We had the predecessor rain yeah. event before Helene even got here, and then even though the, the center of the storm was to the east of us, we still had some wind from that, but just crazy to think, you know, I had heard about people from Florida who evacuated Florida and went up to Asheville, North Carolina to take cover. And then they actually had worse conditions in Asheville yep. than if they had stayed in Florida, you know, in the different areas that they were there, not in that direct path. So uh, we that all have to be prepared. One in a 1,000 storm. Exactly, yeah. And we all have to be prepared everywhere here in the Southeast for this season. Bobby, thank you so much for joining us, giving us your perspective on what we're watching out there right now and also what is to come. I'm sure that we'll be talking, you, talking to you a lot more coming up this hurricane season. I hope you're open to that. Thank you, Chris. I can't wait to join you again. All right. Thanks, Bobby.